Happy everybody. It is a Sunday, January 24th, 2021. Wow. <clears throat> okay, so I come on here because I want to talk to you guys about some little things that I've noticed and picked up on since I started the um, low carb journey and I thought that they would be helpful for you guys. So I want to share them. Okay, so recently, as in the last couple days, I made a bunch of finger foods, um, little stuffed mini peppers, um, just little tiny meatloaf, all kinds of little finger food thingies for two reasons. One, we were supposed to be having company this weekend, which we didn't. Right, huh? And the second one was because it's easier for my husband. We have different eating schedules. We eat differently. And <clears throat> it's easier for him if there's just things in the refrigerator that he can just grab. <laughs> He's a man. That's, that's how he likes it. Um, and anyway, so I made up all this different little bowls of things. I mean, when you open the refrigerator, there was literally like probably 12 bowls of different sizes from, from small, medium, large. You know, it's like, ah, oh, God. And here's what I noticed is that because it, because there was so much food in there and it was easier, I was also picking and grabbing. And and so I decided to uh, do my macros. <laughs> Guys, I probably got over 70 because I quit when I got to 70, 70 um, net carbs, not carb carbs, net carbs. Okay, now for most people, this would not be a big thing. And if you follow the high carb, um, low fat solution or any of those things, and if you ever did, if they worked for you, great. For me, they didn't work for me, okay? It was way too much starch. My body, when I first started trying to figure out this whole thing, how to eat low carb, I had to figure out how much, how many carbs was too much for my body. We're all going to be different. I mean, I'm almost 60, okay? Plus, I had a stroke, so... Before my stroke, for those of you who don't know me, before my stroke, I worked at an Amazon warehouse. I worked a graveyard, graveyard shift, and I walked 32,000 steps a day and night, counting my job and my daytime steps. 30,000 average, or, or let's say my average was 20,000 even. I mean, right? I walked miles every day, every day. And um, I couldn't lose weight. <laughs> I could not lose weight. I was stuck around the 204 to 212 pound mark. <clears throat> and I've lost a lot of weight. I used to weigh 368. So I have lost a lot of weight in my lifetime. And I've kept some, a bigger portion of it off. For some reason, as I got older, I got hooked into this 204 to 212, 206, 204, 212, 210. I mean, just this little spot, right? And any time that I would go under 200, like 199 or 197 or 196, I'm naming the weights I've been, you know, the last few weeks and the last few months my body would automatically jump back to 204. And it was like, oh my God, it was like my set point and I could not get away from it. And so when I started doing the, doing the starches, I had to weigh myself every single day and I had to write down everything I ate so that if there was a gain or a jump, I could figure out what the carbs were for that. If there was a steady loss of a pound a day, which was what it was at the beginning, um, I could see what was helping that. What's really funny is that Eating the way I did in the beginning that I lost 26 pounds in the month of November. 26 pounds, guys. Um, that's because after my stroke, I had gotten up to like 240-something. Um, so, yeah. I got that back off, thankfully. I got below 200. I was really, really feeling happy, right? That I, I was um, the 197 mark again, 196. Feeling really good about that. Really good. But then I noticed that what I did that month to lose that weight... I was eating the same way. I was eating the same kind of things. I wasn't losing. I was losing a few ounces a week. Like each week I've had a loss to where I can't, I can't sit here and, and cry because I've had a loss each week, right? That's a good thing. But it's been ounces, not a pound, not a pound and a half, not two and a half pounds, nothing that would make me see the end in sight faster, right? And so I'm like, what? So I'm, I'm having to tweak my um, carbs a lot. I have to get the 20 net carbs or less, or at least 30 net carbs or less, which gives me about 40, 50, 60 carbs, depending on what I'm eating to play with, right? I have to be on top of it. I don't get to be one of those people that doesn't pay attention to it. When I was eating the high carb way, I mean, I was eating those giant sweet potatoes that people were showing on there, what I eat a day. I, you guys have probably all been to YouTube and saw the what I eat a day videos of high carb people, right? Oh my God, that was so much food. When I tried to eat even close to like they did, I was just packing on the pounds. I was so depressed. I was like, oh, because my, la my last low weight before I gained back all my weight was like 150. 
150 is still a lot for me. I'm five foot four and I'm older and I shouldn't weigh that much. Um, but boy, 150 compared to 220, you know, let's round it off. <laughs> That's a big difference, right? So I really am still in that tweaking process. I'm, I'm not that much ahead of the game of you guys. Some of you guys may have been doing this longer than I have. I didn't start doing the low, um, low carb thing until just a few months ago. I, I started thinking about it. I started thinking of all the times I've lost weight, like a significant amount of weight throughout my lifetime, which has been several times. Um, it was always doing a low carb thing, um, eating earlier in the day. But my problem is, is that I, I will binge eat at nighttime. If I don't give myself the space to eat at nighttime, I will binge. I am a binge eater. I've been a binge eater since I was like eight years old. It's, it's really sad. This is that ingrained in me, right? So I have to eat at nighttime. I don't eat at all during the day at all. I, I can't eat during the day because I have to save my calories and my carbs and everything for night. If I eat at say even noon with, with my husband sometimes, and I have done it, um, I guarantee you, I will go over my carbs and my, my food for the day. Just, I, I can't do that. My husband, like he's always saying, are you hungry? How can you, how can you go so long? But I'm not really, cause my body's kind of adapted to waiting to have my meal like around four or five. And the reason I try to have that meal at four or five is because I know I'm going to want something else at seven or eight. So I give myself about a three, three hour window. I started out trying to do an hour window and I had it down there for a little bit, but that's too hard to sustain. And I'm trying to do a, uh, lifetime sustainability right i mean i don't just want to do it for right now and then have to do i was reading this thing the other day about maintenance people when you're on this track i think that our brain some part of our brain is wired into dieting that mode okay if you've had a weight problem i think that your brain gets dialed into that and this is our comfort zone this is like wearing a, a body suit this this body suit of dieting we're dieters uh, even if we don't say that, <laughs> you know, even if we don't call ourselves that or, or say that to other people, it's a mentality thing, right? So I think that we 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 look for this end thing. This okay, here's the here's the we're racing to this line. Here's what we're trying to get to. But maintenance has been what screwed us up. It has screwed us up, girls. <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind that I'm keeping this all girls, but I just want to talk to the sisters. I don't want to talk to guys. Sorry. Um, I I think that the whole maintenance thing screws us up because we don't know what that looks like we don't know what that is we don't know how that feels the only time i ever maintained a low weight as an adult was when i was in my 20s after i had had anorexia and bulimia for years starved myself almost to death almost died from that whole disease thing back in the early 80s um finally pulled myself out of that and and, and then i just have battled my weight ever since you know ever since i'm not willing to do anything unhealthy to get to the way I want to be. So that all of that was a roundabout way of saying that I can justify having to track things, having to write things down, having to um, basically keep a diary of my day. Of, uh, it's not just a food diary. It's just a diary of my day. But um, it talks a lot about the eating things and how they went that day and what kind of feelings were behind those things and stuff. And I don't know if that will help you guys or not, you know, but um, I, I do know that we have to have sustainability, okay? It has to be every single binge I've ever had, every single um, mind attack or whatever you want to call it that has happened to me has happened because I tried to not eat when my mind wants to eat. And I'm saying when my mind wants to eat because I cannot even be hungry at eight o'clock, seven to eight. It's the seven to eight hour. And it does not matter. My mind will drive me crazy. Will it, and it will drive me physically to the refrigerator or the bag of nuts in the drawer or the peanut butter in the cupboard or whatever that thing is going to be. And here's the thing, you know, I hear people all the time say, well, just keep those things out of your house. Okay, so we kept the nuts out of the house. We kept the peanut butter out of the house. We kept all those things out of the house. And guess what? I transferred that, those things to other things in the house. The only way that would work for me is if there was no food in the house. That's not going to happen. So I have to make it sustainable for me for the rest of my life moving forward so that I'm not just dieting to get to an end goal and with no maintenance, nothing figured out. I want to figure all that out. I want it to become a lifestyle. I want to figure it out as I go. 
for me, it's going to be low carbs. One of the little tricks that I have found recently, you guys may think this is gross. You may not want to go for this at all. Celery. Okay. Now let me tell you about celery. I hate raw celery. I, I don't have, I just don't like raw celery. Um, I like it cooked, but, but kind of al dente. And I can eat it totally plain. Doesn't have to have anything. I can be in a soup or whatever. I'm fine with that. It can be in foods. I'm, I'm good with cooked celery, but I can eat plain steamed celery. And here is a little trick I have had to teach myself here lately. So when I get that weird urge to snack at a time when I know I'm not hungry and I should not be eating, I've been trying to force myself to eat like a half cup or more of cooked, cooked um, celery before I eat whatever the thing is that I was going to go get, the pistachios or whatever they are. Um, and believe it or not, that's actually been helping me because by the time I sit and force myself to eat this half cup of chopped up, diced, semi-cooked celery, my mind is like, what the hell are you doing? You know, and I'll either laugh at myself or or, or I'll be irritated by it, but I, I still haven't been eating. <laughs> so that's one of my little tricks. I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, doing low carb as a vegan is so much harder you guys than okay because in my past i wasn't vegan i've been vegan for about six years but back when i had lost a significant amount of weight years ago i doing the low carb i wasn't vegan and it was so much easier i'm just gonna say that but i'm my husband said yesterday he said wouldn't it be easier if we just did meat till we lost the weight right and i said and i just looked at him and i said i'm vegan i'm not plant-based i'm vegan for the animals I will never eat an animal product again in my life on purpose. That's my choice. Yes, it would definitely be e easier if we were still animal e eaters, flesh eaters or whatever, but, we're, but I'm not. So for me, that's just not, that's, I chose to do it the hard way. And here's my thing. I quit smoking 12 years ago, almost 12 years ago, cold turkey, Went home and cried for 30 days straight. Took showers and cried. Oh my God, I was such a baby. Um, and for eight months, felt like I lost my best friend to death. You know, I mean, it's crazy, right? Because um, it's really funny because I did actually lose my best friend a few years ago. And, and I felt like I quit smoking. I thought quitting smoking was going to be the hardest thing I ever did. It seemed like it at the time. But now I know there's things that are so much harder in life. But I still managed to give up a 38-year addiction and just turn my back and walk away from it. And there's some people who cannot do that. I've watched them struggle with it for years. So if I can do that, if I can give up that habit, which was incredible for me, I was a smoker. Um, I should be able to do this, right? I should be able, the bottom line is even when I get to my weight, even when I'm a, you know, I should be like 120 pounds, 125 pounds, even if I get to that weight or, or when I get to that weight, I can't run around and eat a lot of starches. I'll be able to hopefully maybe have a sweet potato on Thanksgiving. Um, there'll be things and times, but it's not going to be a lifestyle for me anymore. It's just not. So anyway, that was just some of the thoughts I was having today. And one last thought I was having as far as the group goes. I'm thinking that we need to have like some, maybe some topic things and stuff to try to get to know each other and see what kind of uh, support we can offer to one another. So I am coming up with some of that stuff. My mind's twirling on it. So if you have any ideas, let me know. All right. Ciao, everybody. See you later.